real fun to go fast, but that cannot last forever. There's an immense amount of kinetic energy in a moving automobile. And when you stop to think a little bit and do some of the math about just how much energy you're dealing with, it's pretty staggering. This MR2 with a full tank of gas and with me aboard, it's about 3,000 pounds. With this car just going like 60 miles an hour, that's about half a million joules of kinetic energy. And that's enough to power your house for like seven or eight minutes. So how do we take all of this kinetic energy in the car, turn it into something else, get that car to slow down? Well, one of the most efficient things that we can turn it into is heat through the use of friction. And that is exactly how brakes work. So how do you do that efficiently? Well, hard to do that efficiently with the 10 inch brakes that originally came on this Toyota MR2. But things have definitely changed in the last 30 years. And we have a little bit more technology available to us today. And we're gonna bolt some of that technology on today in the form of these 12.2 inch Willwood disc brakes. So you're saying, hey, I'm looking at the Willwood site. I do not see a kit for the 1991 MR2. Well, you are correct. Because while Willwood has off the shelf kits, for real popular cars like Mustangs, Camaros, Challengers, stuff like that, they do not manufacture kits for everything. But that's where guys like Alex Wilhelm come in from Wilhelm Raceworks. Alex manufactures these very cool adapter brackets as well as great stuff like hoses and all the hardware you need to bolt a set of Willwood Forge Superlight calipers or some of their other calipers in their lineup onto your MR2. So how's Willwood feel about this? Well, they're actually really stoked about it because that's one less set of products they have to keep for a niche vehicle like an MR2 or an S13 or a Sentra or a Civic or something that's just a little bit off the beaten path but still very popular with a niche of enthusiasts. So they embrace these guys with the boutique specialty manufacturing outfits that build really cool stuff to put their brakes onto popular cars. So what's it cost to upgrade your MR2 with some cool hardware from Willwood and Wilhelm Raceworks? Well, all in for a kit from Wilhelm, you're looking at $2,300, which includes all of his bespoke custom parts, hydraulics, hardware, and all of the stuff from Willwood, including custom machined aluminum rotor hats from Wilhelm as as well. Now, you can buy just the specific stuff from Wilhelm for around $1,000, add your own Willwood hardware. Let's talk about these rotors a little bit. They are two-piece rotors, again, custom machined um, hats from Wilhelm, specifically tailoring the offset of the rotor to, to the MR2 and to the new um, Willwood calipers. And also, you notice they bolt on here from the back Safety wireless setup. These are uh, Jet Nuts, K Nuts. They are, they are a captive nut that holds these hats onto this rotor. Now, this is an aluminum hat on an iron rotor. So what's gonna happen is when these get hot is that aluminum and that iron are going to expand and contract at different rates. Not necessarily a bad thing, but with any two-piece rotor, you wanna be very conscious of thermal expansion because the wear point on multi-piece rotors that are not floating rotors is going to be right here at all of these junctions. It's very um, likely that if you thermally shock these rotors by heating them too fast, cooling them too fast, that eventually, not immediately, but eventually you could start to see failure points right at these junctions because this and this are expanding at different rates. One of the big upgrades we're making is to a multi-piston setup. In this case, four pistons per corner with these Willwood calipers here. They're also considerably lighter. In fact, the entire system, even though it is much, much bigger, has much more friction area, is considerably lighter than the old system we are taking off. Total weight for the new system, uh, rotors, calipers, adapters, pads, hydraulics, a little bit over 70 pounds, 70.3, 70.4 pounds, according to our intercomp scales. For the old system, calipers, rotors, pads, brackets, over 78 pounds. So that is a substantial savings in, in uh, brake weight. Now, the rotors are slightly heavier. Uh, you, you actually gain a little bit of mass in the rotors. 
So you're adding a little bit of rotational mass, but I will take that trade off for increased efficiency, increased size, and an overall reduction in weight of the system. So we have covered all of the details. The only thing left to do is to bolt these babies on. Mechanically, this is not a super complex operation. You only need a couple of wrenches. In fact, most of the issues arriving from this install are probably going to be due to the age of your, your car and not the install itself. There's only literally half a dozen bolts or fewer involved in the install procedure, but you're also dealing with, in some cases, a 30 plus year old vehicle. So you need to take some precautions when it comes to removing some of the finer stuff. Uh, first thing is on all your hydraulic connections, you absolutely want to use a flare nut wrench and do not try and get away with a regular open end wrench on all those connections. In fact, we had to cut one of the connections off of uh, one of our other, other brakes which we previously did while we were getting ready to, to, to shoot this. Um, even using the flare nut wrench, that 30 year old tube nut on there, round it off, we had to cut it off, reflare it, put a new piece of, uh, of, of tube on there. So that is where your issues are going to come from in an install like this. The actual install, very simple and straightforward. So our other job, while we are down to a bare knuckle and a bare hub here, is to put some proper wheel studs in there. These are ARP studs. These studs, 190,000 PSI of tensile strength. But much like brake rotors, they are also wear items in their own. These are something that depending on how often you, you change your wheels and tires, get torqued, retorqued, a couple times a week, a couple times a day in, in, in some cases, they're under a lot of constant stress. So. You should probably be changing your wheel studs every season. We're gonna change our OEM wheel studs out though for these ARPs, which on this car is a very simple matter of removing the old studs. Just takes a little bit of persuasion with a heavy object and inserting the new studs, which takes just a little bit of persuasion with an electric impact or a hand wrench. So these particular studs are uh, actually out of the ARP catalog. They are specified for the Lexus IS300, not the MR2, but uh, ARP doesn't specify a specific set for the MR2. These have the correct neural diameter on them. They have the right length. The only thing they didn't have was the bullet nose ends. But we talked to ARP, we said, hey, can we chuck these up in our lathe, take a few of the threads off the end, chamfer the, uh, the end a bit, will that you know, do any, any damage? They said, as long as you trust your lathe skills, you are totally okay to do that. The only thing they recommended to us was make sure to coat the end of these studs with something because now the electroplated coating has been essentially, essentially machined off the end of, of this nut. So we just hit them with a little bit of clear coat and we will continue to do that throughout the uh, season. But we have a um, little homebrew set of bullet nose studs for our MR2. Now to install them, we're just gonna slip them in there and we're gonna use a, um, a 14 millimeter nut as a uh, as a fulcrum, slide it down over there and then take our 12 millimeter nut, which is just a regular nut, not one of our, our, our lug nuts. Our studs are in place. We are ready to bolt our new brakes on. We got things cleaned, cleaned up a little bit, some of our spilled fluid with a little bit of CRC brake clean. Time to bolt the new kit on. Now, these brackets from Wilhelm Raceworks make the job super easy. Theoretically, you could build your own brackets. Um, it's if you're an excellent machinist, if you are an excellent, excellent measurer, and if you have some working knowledge of mechanical stresses and loads, by all means, uh, knock yourself out. Alex Wilhelm has all of those things in spades, and he has done the hard work for you, though. By the time you actually figure out what it's going to cost to build these in time, materials, and effort, much easier to let somebody who's uh, smarter than me, certainly, do the hard work for us. And you can see even tiny little details like uh, the fact that these bosses here are clearanced to properly fit around the, the uh, mounting ears here. Everything just fits really, really nice, really slick, and makes this job super easy. We have our custom bracket in place. We have our Willwood rotor with our custom Wilhelm Raceworks hat in place. Time to put the calipers on. now. You may notice that these calipers have four bleed screws on them. You're like, hey, 
what's up with that? Why are there so many bleed screws on this caliper? Which ones do I bleed? Well, pretty cool answer to that is these calipers are designed to be mounted in any position whatsoever. They are universal mounts. You can mount them on this side with these bleed screws up. You can mount them on this side with these bleed screws up. You're only going to use the top bleed screws. Now you also have pistons on both sides of these calipers squeezing from both directions, meaning you have a much more even clamping force on those rotors, not like that single-sided and then sliding caliper clamping force we had with the stock brakes. So you're gonna have to bleed both sides of this caliper. Start with the inboard side first, then move to the outboard side when you're bleeding the air out of these calipers, getting ready to take it out on track. All right, so the caliper's in. Uh, we've got our hydraulic lines that um, are custom, custom made. They come to you in the Wilhelm kit. Another cool thing about these Wilwood, these, uh, these race style calipers, is the pads just easily simply drop in from the top. You don't have to take the caliper off. You just take the bridge bolt out, drop the pads in, you're good to go. Something else very cool is we're using the same style of caliper front and rear. So the pads on the front and the rear of the car are identical. This is not a pad that we would choose for a daily driver, these BP20s, but for something that we're gonna go out once in a, in a while on the weekend and have fun with, but we really wanna focus on it being a autocross slash time trial car, this is a more appropriate pad. So in uh, less than an hour, uh, including a lot of uh, stopping to, to film stuff, we have this corner removed and installed. This is a project you could easily complete at home within the span of an evening or an afternoon. Again, as I said before, the biggest problems you're gonna face with a brake swap like this are probably going to be based on the age and the condition of parts that are already on the car. It's, it's gonna be stuff that you're going to have difficulty removing and most likely uh, some of those tube nuts that are in the existing brake connections. Installing this stuff from Wilhelm Raceworks and Wilwood, absolutely a snap, uh, went quick, everything fit superbly. It's a well-engineered kit. We are excited to get it to the track. Let's talk about track a little bit and what this does to your car from a competition perspective. Now, in, depending on where you're autocrossing, time trialing, or road racing these cars, putting on a much bigger, much more effective set of brakes might move you around a little bit. We're looking at uh, sort of keeping this car in a NASA TT4 type of configuration, which is essentially weight and horsepower, so brakes are basically wide open at that point. Uh, for the SCCA Extreme Street category that we're autocrossing in, again, wide open. But if you're looking at doing this in like a SCCA Street Touring, um, you can, you have some brake allowances in there, but make sure this is a modification that is, is, is okay for you based on your rule book. And uh, even if your brakes are legal, you also have to take into account what wheels are then going to fit with larger brakes installed. Our Koenig wheels fit great, wrapped in those Falcon tires. We cannot wait to get these out on the track with those wheels and tires wrapped around them, which is the next thing we are going to do. Chris is gonna help me bleed these brakes, and then we are gonna to go to the track to the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park, the official test track of Grassroots Motorsports, and see how they work. just don't want to come off of, of, of the track because the same pedal, every corner, every lap, once they get up, up to working temperature, it is just always the same reaction. And you can, you can adjust speed in a corner with them. You can, it's like you can feel what each individual wheel is doing so well. And the, 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 the initial bite is, is very, very well balanced to the car with you know being being a mid-engine car you, you you've got to get that weight forward to get those get those front brakes working if you're especially if you're under hard acceleration you've already got a light front end you, you know it, it's not like a, a big heavy car with the engine in the front and the transmission in the front where you've already got a big load on those front wheels um, so you've got to get that load to the front and the the bite point and the the initial application of, of these brakes is so well suited to the balance of the car. Um, all right, I may not have the most sensitive right foot in the world, but even I know that our braking performance is substantially improved, even in today's 
uh, conditions where there's still a few patches of water out there. It just, it, seat in my pants, fall on my feet, feels much better. But the data is gonna tell the real story. So we're gonna head back to the shop. We're gonna download some of our data from today's session, download some of our data from previous sessions, look at some of these brake traces and see what the numbers say and how our brakes are actually performing. So the effectiveness of these brakes on track is not really evident in your first lap or your best lap, although it is. We're gonna look at that in, in one second, but it's evident in a lot of little stuff. And the first thing we can see here is right between 1600 and 1800 meters where we are entering a long left-hand sweeper. And we can see the red trace is the Willwood brakes, the blue trace is our old brakes. And we can see how much speed we were giving up before we even got to that corner because we didn't have the confidence with the brakes in trying to trail brake properly into that corner. So we're giving up a lot of speed there just on the entry, which was carrying through the entire first part of that corner. And the second place is this really um, dramatic braking area here between 2,400 and 2,600 meters. And you can see the red line with the Willwoods just plummets straight down from brake application and the blue line with the old brakes this was um, about our third or fourth lap they were starting to give up a little bit there's a little bit of a round top on that braking so the benefit of good brakes is not just in better brake application it's in consistent brake application and it is in confidence inspiring brake application that lets you charge into those corners with a lot more aggression and a lot more confidence on every lap. Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.